Good morning. Welcome to the Celtic Way Morning Briefing Live. It's Monday, 26th of June. I'm Tony Haggerty. It's about 10 o'clock ish, five past eight, something like that. A Haggerty 10 on the tw- at A Haggerty 10 on the Twitter handle, as you can see. And I'm joined today by Ryan McGinley at the Ryan McGinley. Happy Monday, Ryan. Is it? Is it still a happy Monday where you are? Yeah, I would say it's a happy Monday. Yeah, it was a it was a good weekend. Good weekend. Um, Celtic wise with the stories. Um, yeah, still still very positive with regards to everything that's going on at the moment with the club. So yeah, can't really complain. It's a it's a happy Monday. It's about as happy a Monday as you can get, to be honest. <laughs> Woke up at the weekend, Ryan. We were selling Kyogo. Celtic were selling Cameron Carter Vickers. They were selling Jota, Spurs and Ajax and all that. But hey. As what is Stephen Wells possibly going to, or oh, disaster, catastrophe, all that kind of stuff. But one thing that was noticeable was that Celtic have agreed a fee with Australian Marco Tilio. Now you said you went away off here and you said to me you watched these videos on Friday. Did that excite you, young man? Yeah, um, I instantly when, when when I watched the Tilio's videos, he, he did remind me of Paddy Roberts. The, the, the sort of the way in which he takes on a man, he, he isn't scared to take to take his defenders, his, his opposition defenders on. He's got a bit of pace about him as well. I think that was the one thing that Paddy Roberts maybe didn't have. He, he wasn't the he wasn't the quickest. He'd beat somebody with skill rather than pace, and he's dribbling. So. Yeah, he looks like a really good talent by all accounts. Um, part of the City group, which <laughs> ticks another box as well. Obviously, we're going to be linked with about 20 of these players, it feels like, over the, the transfer window. But yeah, he, he looks like he comes from good stock. I don't, I don't think there's too much to read into the fact that he, he doesn't have a Australian cap. He's got two under-23 caps in the past couple of months. So yeah, it took Rogic until he was 22, 23 to get his first cap for, for Australia. So I think he'll be all right. He looks a really good player. He, he looks very much like the sort of player that Celtic go for, the right mould, and he looks as if he can improve as well as time goes on. So, yeah, uh, he, he is a sort of player that Celtic should be going for, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of him if he does come into the club. He was linked with Manchester City, wasn't he? I think every player are. <laughs> <Is it> <laughs> from, the, from the City group, yeah. Yeah, yeah I suppose that's, that, that's fair enough. I seem to remember Celtic also had Daniel Ozani at one point as well. Um, that yeah. obviously didn't go too well for him. His two-year loan deal, and he done his ACL in his debut, which was I mean you can't you can't get much more unlucky than that because he did look like a good player up until his injury on that debut, um, and he never really got going afterwards. I don't think he's the same player either. He, he seems to pick up injuries a lot when he's playing back in Australia. That's where he's back. I think he's at MacArthur FC now. So you're hoping that. If uh, Talio does come in, he has a better sort of Celtic career than, than Arzani did. Well, you look at when Rodgers first came in, he brought in uh, Scott Sinclair, hit the ground running, and he brought Patrick Roberts, who also had his injury troubles as well at Celtic. But when he played, Paddy was an exciting footballer and the Celtic supporters liked him. So I guess Rodgers likes these kind of players, Ryan, guys that are direct and you know score goals and can create goals and yeah. from Telio sure he looks as if he can do that yeah there's a goal that he just keeps on running there's options <laughs> either, either side of him he's like no do you know what I'm just going to take it right in the top corner top right hand corner um, yeah it looks like he's got a bit of that maverick about him which you need as a Celtic winger you, you need to have that bit of skill about you and that bit of magic if you're going to play um, on the wings for Celtic we've certainly got that just now with some of our players Jot has got that famously so yeah, he does look pretty impressive by what by what I've seen so far. Um, if we can get him for about a million to what, a million and a half, that'd be a great bit of business, and it would it would solve another area because I think right wing is an area we're going to need to strengthen in. If Jota is going to play on the left hand side next season, I don't see as accommodating Maeda on that left hand side. I see as playing Jota in his best position. So there's going to need to be a right winger in there, especially if Abada wants to leave the club as well. I've not really heard too much about that in the past couple of weeks, but. You know, he was he was making sort of moves and making sort of notions that he was going to leave the club. So it will be interesting to to see that. So a right winger is needed. Now you said one of the papers carrying a report saying that a, a fee's been agreed between I think it's about a million a million and a half, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I think that's the kind of figures that they're talking. Is that is that right? 
Yeah, that that seems to be the, the the thing, and I'm not sure what publication it was that wrote that, but it's it's looking as if it's fairly down the road this this deal. Um, so that I mean that's good. We're what in the last week of June, we've nearly got two players signed up. We've already got Oden home. We've got another. Well, it, well, he's 20 years old, and this this guy's 21, 22. So it's the perfect age file for these guys coming in. We'll they'll get loads of game time, and then hopefully in a couple of years we'll make a, a healthy profit on them. But it shows that the the mar- the, the system is working, bringing in young players, getting them to play, and then hopefully selling them on for a bit more. That is that's the that's the model that Celtic are pursuing. Right now, I'll flick up some comments because lots of comments coming in as they all do. Good morning, people. How are we doing? First up, Wagwan, the lad might be unknown, but he's been scouted the same way as O'Reilly or Abada, etc. So if we sign him, let's see what he's all about. I'm, I'm, I'm on board with that, Wagwan. That's exactly what we what happening here. Patrick McLaughlin, morning, Patrick. Is that the same guy that was being tipped to move to City uh, a couple of months ago? He just said there, <laughs> might well be. Mm-hmm. And Pete McGee, time to get your sundial fixed, Tony. Yep, indeed, my sundial was a wee bit <laughs> let me down this morning, but we're here. So we'll see how it goes. And then he comes back in to say, Marco Taylor looks like a genuine find. His WF showreel is insane. So yes, you were talking about there, showing that goal that he just kept running. You said uh, mm-hmm. options to either side, but he just sort of kept running and scored. See, I, I enjoyed that highlight, but I also enjoyed the highlight of him keeping the ball and, and play as well. The ball's just about to run out of play. He does this, <laughs> this sort of manoeuvre to keep the ball from going yeah. out of play. I just love that. That's the sort of attitude that you're looking for in a player. I mean, you're, you're just looking for somebody that, that wants to keep the ball in play and keep the, keep the game going. So, yeah, it's that attitude that will get him going uh, and, and, and get him going a, a long way in the game. You hopefully can do well at Celtic with that and, and keep that going. Plunge McNugget, morning Plunge, how you doing? Morning folks, Tilly and Homer, good signings. Just waiting for Brendan to bring in a couple of big signings. We were talking about that on Friday, weren't we? About who could be the kind of showstopper signing. Uh, and we think that there will be at least one of them, won't there? Possibly two. Hopefully, we shall see. Mike, Mickey Money saying I tell you, looks like a hacksaw, as in Haksabanovic that can finish. Haksabanovic can finish as well. Let's be honest. <laughs> I, I mean, did you see his goals against Hibs and Hearts? He's got, he's got a great finish on him. I think it's just game time with him. I'm yeah. really looking forward to seeing what he can do next season. Likewise. Uh, retro Celtic, morning Retro Celtic. Marco Taylor is very left footed and Red Scotland saying he's not that impressed by this guy. Who the hell is Tilio? I thought that's fair enough. You're all entitled to your opinion, Red Scotland. Uh, Andrew Galea coming in and saying young Marco Taylor is a good young winger, can beat a man with the ball at his feet rather than knocking it past him and running on. And Pete McGee saying he thought the same. Uh, the guy seems to know where the goal was. I think he's talking about the Haksabanovic comment and JM coming in and saying, you know, Celtics talk about making a decent dent in Europe and then get excited about A League players. Is he missing something? I think that's a bit unfair, Ryan. I think this guy's a, a hot prospect, isn't he? And if Celtic are doing their scouting and their homework and also through their contacts in the city group, then I think that's a, a good way to do business. Yeah, and everybody's got to start somewhere. These talents can come from wherever. It doesn't really matter the, the location that they're coming from. If they've got the talent, then they'll make their way in the game. And if, if Celtic can get them before any other team, then that would be ideal. That, that, that's the thing. If if Tilly was to go to a PSV or Ajax or Feyenoord, then he'd be out of a price range. So it's all about Celtic getting them now rather than when they, they maybe a couple of years' time when they, they can't afford to bring them in. You've got to nurture these talents, and if he's good enough, then I'm all for it. You've got him. You've got to mix the the squad, the first team players, and also with some squad players as well. Though that are going to make the difference. Um, not every player can be a six, seven million pound signing. That's just not the the parameters that Celtic are working with, or the parameters, or whatever. Um, so yeah, they've just got to litter the team with some prospects as well. He looks like a prospect. Looks like somebody that can make a difference make a difference instantly. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm all for this deal. If, he, if he's good enough, then it doesn't really matter where, we, where we're scouting from. Um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing more of him if he does come through the door. It is looking like it is going to happen. We've got the links for the City group, Melbourne City, 
are the affiliate club in Australia with Manchester City. So Mark Lowell will know all about them. He'll have de- yeah. dealt with them before. So this looks like it should be a pretty easy move to manufacture. Andrew Gillier saying Tilly will be a big fan favourite assuming he comes. He loves taking people on and uh, lots more in the chat. I'll try and star them as we're going along. Uh, it's, uh, it's keeping my eyes peeled for ones that are I think printable. It's... The retro <laughs> Celtic saying great business done by Celtic, Tony. There you go. On you go. Sorry, Ryan. I think it's important to underline the point that Brendan Rodgers will make these players better as well if you bring them in. Of course. They might not be they might not be five million pound, five, six million pound players at the moment, but once Brendan Rodgers is finished with them, they might be worth that. They might be worth even more. He does famously get the most out of players that come through the door. So these young players that are hungry for success, you bring them in and Brendan Rodgers will improve them. Yes. Hazel Finn coming in morning. Hazel, how are you? The Brendan Rogers twinkles back. For those I still have to give in, see you back here in May. You know, he, he said that after when he addressed mm-hmm. the crowd, didn't he? And on Friday after the the press conference, I did chuckle at that. I thought it was quite funny. Confidence. Uh, yes. Yes, it's Retro Celtic said great business done by Celtic. I've flicked that one up. Uh, Andrew Gallier, there's still plenty of money for Rogers to make a mar- marquee signing with Europe in mind. I'm sure he will make a marquee signing. Uh, and Mantis Toboggan MD saying, what's the work permit situation with regards to Tilio? I'm not, I'm not too sure, to be honest, but I do know that the work permits have, have been a bit easier to get recently. That's been one of yeah. the plus sides of, of Brexit. I don't yeah. know if there's many, but it seems as if Celtic have, have found work permits a bit easier to get after after all that debacle. So, the, yeah, if, if there's one positive, then I'll take it that, that way as well. Um uh, for, for the Japanese players, there was never that issue as well, which is which is good. It means we can expand our markets and, and, and get the best players that maybe other other countries or other teams aren't scouting in at the moment. If we can get them before anybody else, and that's only a positive for me. Yeah. Do Harlow or Do Harlow LP come down and say, Brendan Rodgers will make better players of Anthony Johnson, Greg Taylor, Cameron Carter Vickers, etc. So no worries from him. Yeah. And making more Ricky Monaghan asking is Tilly an Ange signer or an Ange catch, you know? The Mark Lowell catch, I think. Yeah, I, I think it's it, it's very clear from the the comments that we've we've seen from Brendan Rodgers that the there is a transfer committee now. It's much more developed than when he was there four years ago. So that's yes. that's very interesting. That, that and, and that's good because there, there needs to be that continuity. It can't just be the manager that's signing players because. What if the manager leaves halfway through the season? There's got to be a committee that decide these things and then the manager gets the final say. But as long as those players are scouted by the committee, then that's a positive. Nax coming in and saying, Tilio struggles to break, in, break into a fairly average Aussie team, so I think he will not make much difference in Europe. And on the flip side of that, Blake one own one says, I was a tad sceptical when I heard of Marco Tilio coming from the Australian League. Like the quality of football, etc. But looking at his videos has got him excited. A bit like yourself, Ryan. You looked at the the videos and you think uh, he's he'll he'll be able to cut the mustard. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. He's a. Uh, I've seen that uh, Hearts have obviously had a bit of an Australian contingent over the past two three years. I don't know if he's maybe the one of the ones that he can't afford. He's one of the, the sort of higher end Australian players. Yes. He, he seems as if he's one of the top prospects in the A League, so it is a very interesting one. Um, if he can make a difference straight away and come into the team and, and make first team appearances, then it'll have been a really good deal. And with his with his age, there's plenty of upside. So, um. If, if it does get done, then I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing him starting playing for Celtic. And he, he seems like a good guy off the pitch as well. I heard him talking about Aaron Moy, training with Aaron Moy. So, I mean, if I, it's still up in the air whether or not Aaron Moy will continue on with his football career. But if he does, he'll have a familiar face coming in, in uh, Marco Tilio and, and vice versa. So, yeah, it, it seems like he'd be a pretty good fit. Just hoping it, it gets... It gets sealed. Be an interesting one to see with regards to Yang as well, though, because Yang plays in, in right wing too. Yeah. Um, it, it could be one of those ones where Celtic have identified three or four targets. They maybe not get the first one, but they'll get the second one. Or it could be the other way about. Yang could have been the second choice, and then Tilio became available. So 
I don't know if we'll sign two players for that position, but it's good that they're covering themselves in case one deal doesn't work out, then they've got another player to come in and do the business instead. Correct. The comments are coming in by the barrel load, so I've just started a few again and I'll read them out. So here we go. Uh, where did I get to? Brian McGinty. Morning, Brian. Tell her looks real quality. He's really excited about them. And then Patrick McLaughlin comes in and says, you don't mind one or two projects as long as it's not a squad full of them. And Michael Ross, only Michael, two projects so far. Celtic need to up their game. With Jason Lee saying he's glad that Celtic are still looking at the Asian market for value players. And then Plunge McNugget saying Brendan didn't come back to buy one or two million pound players. And Jordan saying Telio isn't any better than Haxavanovic, but the kid's all right. And then he's saying there's probably about five or ten more promising Aussies out there, but Telio can do a job. He's a creative player. Andrew Galea saying Telio's small but fast. He loves taking on a man and can score goals. He's only 21. An issue that we flagged up here. You were talking about that as well. Ryan and JM saying top four teams in the Champions League are not buying A-League players. I'm sorry. Fair enough, James. A bit more sceptical about Celtic bringing in younger players and Steve McGrory. Morning, Steve. How are you? One of Brendan's biggest talents is developing young players, hence home and Tilio. The power he will bring in will be tried and tested. Look forward to some major flagship signings over the coming weeks. I'm on board with that, Steve. I think that's what will happen. You know, you have to you have to have an eye in the future in terms of signing young players and as you see Ryan then moving them on for profits further down the line, two or three years whatever, how long they commit to Celtic and I think that's what home and Tilly almost certainly are getting them in as early as you can when you can afford them and not getting them or not being priced out of them further down the line as you see if they, if they go elsewhere Celtic have to get these guys now and hopefully come and they adapt and they do what the likes of Jota, Abada and uh, Kyogo have done. Uh, that's that's the way it is, isn't it? That's the way Celtic do their business and it's been very successful in the past couple of years. Well, there's no reason to suggest that if Tilio joins home uh, at Celtic Park, then they won't be a success. But we'll, like everything else, judgments will be made when you see them play. We can all look good in a DVD, Ryan, can't we? Even I could look good in a DVD, <laughs> or, or maybe not. A glorious future behind a glorious future behind me. I think as someone once said. I always, um, I always mention the the one player that didn't look good in highlights, and we still signed them was Amido Baldi, and we know how that turned <laughs> out. Um, that I'm sure somebody put up like a 14 minute video of him. That was the worst thing we could have done. <laughs> it should have been a 14 second video. That would have maybe gotten better news. But yeah, but it was just one of those players that was just awful from the get-go but it's, it's good to see that Celtic are still are still going to be operating in the Asian market it would be so pointless if they, they'd made that sort of development with regards to Asian football and then thrown away just because they got a new manager in the door I'm glad there's a wee bit of continuity and we can still sort of exploit that market a wee bit more um, because yeah. we've done so well in the, we've done so well with Kyogo, Hitati, Maeda even Iwata etc so it's good that they're continuing to use that market and hopefully it gives us more success in the coming years. Indeed. Now, you mentioned Yang. Yang's uh, pretty keen on coming to Celtic, but it's been blocked by his club so far, hasn't it? The move and then, as you say, by bringing in Tilio, that might put the markers on that. Yeah, it's, it's one of those ones where the Korean league is still going on at this point in time. So a lot of teams are going to be... It's the same for Japanese teams in the summer. Um, they don't want to sell their assets while the season's going on. For Gang Wong, he's one of their most important players and they're, they're fighting a relegation battle just now. So they don't want to be losing any more players when they're trying to stay up in the top division. But it's different for Australia because the league's over. So it's maybe a bit easier for Melbourne City to let go of their player because they can replace him. The fact is, it's, it's their close season or, or at the end of their season, so they're just getting prepared for next season. So there might be more of a, a, a shout for the player, for one of the players to make a move. But for the for the teams in Korea and Japan, it would be more difficult to replace them. So I can see why they're they're blocking the move, but it does seem as if he's absolutely raging that he's not 
he, he's not been allowed to go to the move that he was promised. Yes, uh, I think he uh, forced his move through, didn't he? In the end, mm-hmm. up he went, he chapped the door about three or four times and made it plain and clear that he wanted to come to Celtic. So the same might happen with Yang further down the line. We need to wait and see, but he seems kind of very keen to come to Celtic. Why wouldn't you? Because he's probably watched what's happened with the other. The other players that have come from Asia, Kyogo Maeda, you know, and uh, Kobayashi, and they've all kind of settled in very well. Hatati as well, so, and even O himself. So he'll look on at that and think, I fancy a bit of that. So he might well do the same. You know, might have to kick the door down just as O did to force his move through. But it's one we'll watch with interest. But he, from, from all intents and purposes, he certainly seems keen on coming to Celtic. Yeah, and Marky, um, on you go. Sorry, no, I thought, I thought you were saying something. Oh, oh, definitely did kick the door down to get to Celtic, <laughs> but that doesn't surprise me. That's the sort of player he is, he's very much all action. It doesn't surprise me he was like that with his transfer as well. Um, yeah, I was watching that, I was watching a video. Um, he done a, he done a QA with Celtic TV. It seems as if he's a very popular member of the the dressing room. He's got loads of pals from different sort of groups, so it's good to see that he's <laughs> he's settled in. It shows the real dynamic in the squad. Everybody seems to be friends with each other. You mentioned Hak Sabanovic. Yeah, you're looking forward to seeing him next season. I'm looking forward to seeing O as well, because mm-hmm. I really do think that I think with with quite a few of them, Hak Sabanovic and O in particular, the there is the nub or nucleus of a right good player there. Just the raw materials there. Just want to see them possibly get extended runs. I know it was harder for O because he's vying with Kyogo. But we keep getting told Kyogo's leaving, don't we? 20, 25, 35, 40 million, you name your price. He's going to Tottenham. We shall see what happens. Uh, we, uh, he's still a Celtic player, Ryan. Two years left on his deal and he seems very, very happy at the club. So, yeah. I I still fully expect Kyogo to be there next season until we're told otherwise. And Marquis saying it's Celtic's model. Celtic need to blend youth with experience. Quite agree with that and love it saying he agrees that buying young, we were talking about this earlier, and hope for a good sell on in later years. And Plunge McNugget saying just because Tilio's Australian doesn't mean he's a Nazani. I think Daniel Nazani was really, really unlucky. It just didn't happen for him, did it? From his debut, you know, when he ruptured his ACL and just that was it. He was never ever the same, was he? No, I know. He's he's probably even more highly rated. I'm I'm not. Yeah. I'm not absolutely clued up on Australian football. I'm not going to lie and say that I am. But Daniel Ozani, was he not the youngest ever player to play for Australia at one point? I think it was Andrew Postecoglou that actually gave his gave him his Australian debut. Yeah, he he was so highly rated. But injuries obviously caught up with him. I remember watching him. um, in the reserve team, he played against Albion Rovers at, at Clifton Hill. Um, but even then, he, he, you knew there was talent with him, but he, he just looked out of sorts. So I'm, I'm hoping that his career uh, has a wee bit of a revival in Australia. Yeah, and Brian McGinty saying the A League, Celtic going back to it, football snobbery. Why can't quality come from there? You mentioned that point earlier. Just because he plays in the A League, it doesn't mean that he's not a quality footballer. And Scott Dougal saying he's nothing against signing players like Taylor, but where does that leave young players like Vata? That's a fair point, isn't it? It is, yeah, but it gives players like Vata an incentive that they need to be pushing and pushing for these for these chances when they do come around. I think for Celtic, there's, there's no point in playing young players just for the sentiment part of it. Yeah. They've got to be good enough for the team, and if you can get a good enough replacement elsewhere, then you're obviously going to you're going to try and push for that because you want to see the best you want to see the best version of Celtic on the park so well, I don't want to push for us for the sake of it yeah and plus Google always said that young players have to earn it don't they mm-hmm. uh, when they get brought into the, the first team fold Jordan saying to Brian McGinley exactly say everything negative people say about the A-League people say the same about Scotland it's just snobbery whose news I quite like the A-League till he'll fix the dressing room Another guy with good skills, energy goals and assists. Can't get enough of them in your team, uh, Ryan. Someone that will bring in good skills, energy goals and assists. Jerry or saying, morning, Jerry, how you doing? Thinks wages might be a problem with the top, top level players. We asked the question, Jerry, and we'll see what happens. And Hazel Finn saying, hopes the majority of the 
the team stage this year. Be interesting to see how they perform under Brennan Rogers. Think it would benefit them too. And Manchester Bog and MD saying it's snobbery towards the A League in the comments is very reminiscent of the English media. So snobbery towards the SPFL. Yeah, I I mean I not any personal snobbery myself here, Ryan, because I I think Celtic are making great use of markets that they haven't previously scouted before, but are now very much aware, having brought in Ange Postacoglu, his uh, contacts in the Asian market, and now Matt Law working with the City Group, so he he's uh, he'll be all over uh, the Asian market and Australian markets, and that's why we're trying to cherry pluck the best ones at this particular junction in their career, as you're saying, projecting two or three years down the line, where hopefully they can come, make an impact, and possibly take their career on a on an upward trajectory. That's what that's, that's Celtic have to do. That is the model. Uh, and mm-hmm. speaking of that model, Frimpong could be on the move. Ryan, he's been linked with Real Madrid, no less. Celtic rumour to have something like a 15% sell-on clause, isn't it? With Frimpong, that would just be utterly astonishing if he's Frimpong good. gets it. Yeah, a move to Real Madrid and Celtic coin in even more money from that move. Yeah, he's definitely good enough for them as well. I don't know if you've watched any of him since he since he joined Bayer Leverkusen. Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. But he is he is very very capable of making that step up. The first time I watched him for Celtic, I was like, "Who is this guy?" That that pace <laughs> when he starts running, he's so he's like a mini Alfonso Davies that plays for Bayern Munich. He, he's, he there's the similarities, or um, I mean, apart from the height, that the, the height difference. Frimpong's a bit of a smaller version, but. A really, really good young player with a great attitude as well. He always put in a hundred percent when he was playing for Celtic. I think he helped sort of balance the books as well with regards to the the COVID season because I know Celtic were down a bit in money, but that that nine million went a long way to sort of balancing things with the fact there was no fans on the ground, etc. So. Yeah, it, it was a really good sign. I remember it was him and Leo Connor that signed on deadline day. It was him, Leo Connor, and Greg Taylor. They all signed on deadline day. And Leo Connor was the one that was touted to make a, a more of an impact in the first team. But they must have watched from Pong, watched two minutes of him, and been like this guy's good enough for the first team. Yeah, um, if he if he makes that move, then I have no doubt he'll be a success in Spain. He's, He's a really good young player, and I think you'll only see him improve in the years to come. And if it means Celtic get a good profit as well, then I'm all for that. I also think that looking on at Celtic, I, I said this last year, even when Andrew was there, but I see even more so now when Brendan Rodgers is at the helm, Celtic are in the Champions League. Players, you know, Celtic are a viable and attractive proposition for players. Yeah, they have a wage cap and a wage ceiling. I get all that. But if you're projecting two or three years down the line. Then you look at somebody like Frimpong, who has gone from Celtic to Bayer Leverkusen, who could potentially end up at Real Madrid. You know, if you back yourself, and Brendan Rodgers likes players to back themselves, then they can project that you know, into the future and think, well, if he did it via Celtic, Virgil van Dijk was always bestowing the virtues of Celtic and saying that they put him on that career path and trajectory to Liverpool, mm-hmm became a European champion with them. So I think Celtics in that kind of you know you know upward trajectory and curve of a footballer, it's a worthwhile and it's a viable proposition as a you know if you really think you're a top player and you can go right to the top, a pit stop at Celtic isn't the worst for your career. And also it benefits both parties because Celtic as you say can sign you up for however long two, three, four years, it's lots lots of long-term contracts and then cash in and you, if and when the time is right, if if that's where you see your career uh, ending up, you know, down south or in Germany. You know, we only had Josip Juranovic for a while, but still got a, bit, a decent bit of business for Josip Juranovic. You know, but while you're here, all you ask that while they're at Celtic, they give their all and help Celtic become successful both domestically and in Europe if they can. Yeah, it's it's like uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Sort of thing. Yeah. Um, you do you do well for the club, then you'll get that better move down south or on the continent as a 
as Frimpong got with Bayer Leverkusen, which I thought was a great move at the time from was like, that's a perfect place for you to hone your development. Because there was still a lot of parts of his game that he needed to improve on. I see that he's he's managed to develop a final ball when he was in Germany, something that he didn't <laughs> really have. Um yeah, he seemed to just run, seemed to just run with the ball. Um, just just don't cross. He seems to be able to cross now, which, which is good for him because I think that was the last piece of the puzzle. If he's got that that pace and then he's got the cross, then he'd become a hell of a player, and he certainly has. Um, so if, if a player does well um, at Celtic, then it means they get their move away, whatever that, that may be. It, but it's such a great place to develop because you it's 60,000 stadium, you're playing under an elite manager, Brendan Rodgers, playing amongst good players. You'll dominate possession most weeks, um, or every week, <laughs> it seems like. Mm. And um, it's a good test for players as well, because if they can't, if they can't cut it itself, there's no way they're going to cut it down south. So, you know, it's, it's, demand, it's a sink or swim. Yeah. The demands on you at a club like Celtic are colossal, Ryan. It's mm-hmm. not just, you know, you have to win. There is no, <laughs> there is no alternative. Failure is not an option. At a club mm-hmm. like Celtic, so you're peaking and peaking and peaking every week against teams who are peaking and peaking and trying to beat you every week and uh, playing playing whatever way or style that they try to, to stop you from playing. Mm-hmm. You know, most teams try to, you know, you say they're all agricultural, is a bit kind of disingenuous, but you know, some teams do that, you know, and so Celtic have to find a way to combat that most weeks and then they go into Europe and the calibre of opposition is, you know, ratcheted up a few notches and that's how, you know, they, as you say, they sink or swim in Europe, but there's a mentality you need to be successful at a club like Celtic. Not all players have that because they're not asked, they're, they're not asked for those demands at clubs that they play at. You know, winning is important, yeah, and winning playing a certain way is important, but, you know, there can be clubs where the demands are just nothing like Celtic. Or Rangers, for that matter, you know, and, and that's why a lot of uh, a lot of players who've grown up to be managers, or a lot of players who've played for either of the the Glasgow clubs, say that that the demands are just colossal, and you do sink or swim with that. Yeah, it's very much a winning mentality up here. You, you've got to win. It's it's such a it's such a weird <laughs> league in which a draw is considered a loss most weeks. Yes. Uh, depend depending on. The circumstances in which you you obtain a draw or you salvage a draw in some some cases, but that can still be seen as a defeat. It's a great attitude for for any young player to have because they'll take that wherever they go. They'll, they'll obviously bring that winning mentality with them to their next club, and that will in turn improve the, the the players that they they team up with in in, in later years. So it is it is good practice. Um, it's it's just a great place to develop for for players and. It's shown with the fact that Celtic are linked with so many young players that it's an attractive place to to hone their talents. It's always an attractive place. I've always said that. Uh, Red Scotland saying, how many players from the Asian market dominate games for their side in European competitions? You can't think of one. And Patrick McLaughlin saying, to be honest, you can't see any of the Japanese players being at Celtic by the end of this current season. And Kevin Ferrier saying he hopes that Celtic can keep Kyogo, Hatati and Jota for this season. And they want to play in Europe and they won't want to leave. Murphy or oh, Alexander's a bit more positive. Nobody is leaving. Nobody. And then he comes in and says, why did Celtic let Frimpong go? <laughs> and Marquis saying, playing in Germany perfected Frimpong's game. His club turned him into a specialist, something Celtic need to match with their own prospects. Couldn't agree more, Marquis. And who's new saying wage cap keeps players incentivised? I think that's also very true. And Andrew Galea saying we still play in Scotland and pay wages and accordingly. It's not easy to bring in Champions League quality. I agree with that as well. And Derek Rook says we possibly need a couple of starish signings. That's the, the sprinkling of stardust we were talking about on Friday, Ryan, with uh, Marquis signings. Call him what you like. Manchester Bogan saying he's genuinely amazed at Frimpong's development. All, could, all he could do at Celtic was run very fast. Honestly, thought it was daylight, daylight robbery when we Celtic sold him for 15 million. Not daylight robbery anymore, is it? <laughs> he's uh, like a bit of a attracting, bargain for uh, <laughs> attracting uh, Real Madrid. 
no less. So yeah, it's that and another one that you mentioned at the top of the programme, Ryan, who's catching interest, and I think it was in the Daily Mail, wasn't it? Stephen Welsh, Verona being linked with him. Uh, mm -hmm. Verona and you, um, Bologna as well, I think. Yeah, Bologna, two Italian clubs. <clears throat> Is that the right move for Stephen Welsh at this particular time? Do you still think he's got a part to play at Celtic? Do you think Brendan Rodgers will want to have a look at him and see exactly what the lie, where the lie of the land is there? I think it's best for all parties if he moves on because he wasn't getting a he wasn't getting a look in at him towards the end of last season. We were playing Iwata, who's a centre mid, basically at centre back. Before then, it was yeah. Kobayashi. I think it says a lot about Kobayashi as well. The fact that Iwata was playing at centre half in place of him. Uh, if you if you can't make it, I know there was injuries as well with Stephen Welsh, but I think it's best for all parties if he if he does move on. Be a great move for him. You've seen guys like Arden Hackey, uh, Ferguson, Henderson. They've all done well since going to Italy, and you never know. He, he could have an upturn in form and do really well there. It could be a better fit for him in one of those teams. Both teams have a history of signing Scottish players, so that I can see why those moves are getting touted. Um, I know Udinese were linked with him a couple of years ago as well. So it'll be interesting to see if, if, if those links are still there with that player. But it, it seems as if he's very much a player that's on demand. I just don't think he'll make it at Celtic, unfortunately. Um, he was... He, it was a handy player to have during the COVID season when defensively Celtic were a shambles, but it's one of those ones where that's that St. Martin, that St. Martin game stands out. He was absolutely bullied by the two strikers up top for them. Yeah. And I don't think he's really came back from that, to be honest. Brian McGinn to seem Celtic have got a great structure for young for young players to thrive. I agree with that. Max Stark comes in and says Stephen Welsh and Yuki Kobayashi will both be off in the I think he thinks in the close season or the summer. Jason Lee saying he thinks it's time for Welsh to make a move. He's agreeing with you. And Michael Ross saying playing at a higher level and prove from Pong. You're saying if he goes to Serie A, then he might improve his game. And Brian McGinty also coming in and saying he knew Frank Pong would go right to the very top. But yeah, maybe sometimes that's what players need, doesn't it? Just to you know cut the losses and leave Celtic and go and try and reinvent themselves somewhere else. Someone that might fall into that category as well as maybe somebody like Mikey Johnston, eh, having done decently enough in Portugal and then looking not too bad on the, the international front. So we'll see what happens. But I, I'm in agreement with that in terms of Welsh. I think maybe Welsh is, eh, yeah, at an age where he maybe has to just eh, move on for, and I think that's the right thing for both parties. Brian McGinty coming in. Welsh at the age where if he's going to cut it at Celtic, he would have done it by now. Best for the boy moves on. Yeah, I think that's my kind of thoughts on it as well. Did you not? Um, did you? Did you notice as well as me? Um, you know, you know when Brendan Rodgers was mentioning the players that, that were at the club the last time that he was manager, such as Scott Bain, yes. James Forrest, and Cal McGregor. Why didn't he mention Anthony Ralston in that? Since he was the one that gave him his debut. That's a bit of a weird one for me. I don't know if he's just forgot about him or does he maybe not see him as part of the long-term future of Celtic. It's just just something that... Uh, you, it was a weird can, one that he didn't mention. You can read what you want into that, can't you? Maybe it was just a, a, an oversight that he's just forgot he's a lot about him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I would give him the benefit of the doubt on that. But, uh, yeah, it's he, he should be aware of him, shouldn't he? More than anything else, but... I, 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 yeah, I'll err on the side of caution and say that he just forgot and it was an oversight. But if you want to read deeper into that, then maybe he doesn't see Anthony Ralston as part of the long term future of Celtic moving forward. But I don't think Anthony Ralston has let anybody down since he reinvented himself under Ange Poster Coglu. But I think uh, a couple of times of late, I think the old deficiencies in his game uh, rose to the surface, and uh, yeah, and he, I think he had a purple patch, didn't he, under Ange? Yeah, he you know, so you can't take that away from him. Whether Brendan Rodgers believes he's still good enough to play in his Celtic's first team, that remains to be seen. That's that's why he's there, isn't he? Derek Rook saying Ralston is a Celtic man, no, no doubt in that, no doubt in that. Uh, 
and JD saying he wasn't asked about Ralston, but he was specifically asked about the others. So, listen, I'm, I'm not reading anything into what he said. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure if anybody can continue the purple patch uh, that he'd had under Andy Dennis Brendan Rodgers, he'll be able to get more out of Ra- Ralston as well. So, I'm not entirely writing him off at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's proved many people wrong in the past, and he, he could certainly do it again. But Edward Y of Oz says he feels for Ralston under Rogers. I'm a bit like that myself, I have to say. That's just uh, and that's fair enough. That's fair comment, is it not? Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy that's replaced him in the starting lineup is that good though. That's the thing. I think it's looking yeah. like when we were talking about how Frimpong was a bargain for Bayer Leverkusen on our end, three million is a bargain for Alistair Johnson. I think well, he's you already what, three or four times the player of that. Well, I'll tell you quality. what I would say about that. People talking about Kyogo and Hitati and Cameron Carter, my cousin Jota leaving. I'd be more concerned if Alistair Johnson left at this moment. He's tailor made for the Premier League. Yeah, and uh, I'd be worried if anybody uh, was looking at him. Well, I would say I'd be worried people should be looking at him because he's a, a quality footballer, but I, I would be uh, reticent to entertain any bids. For uh, Alistair Johnson, I think he's a he's came and he's hit the ground running. He's been absolutely fantastic for Celtic, and I want to see more of him. I'm sure every fan does. So I would say keep looking at other people, just eyes off uh, Alistair Johnston. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's one of those ones. He's a uh, he's just such a such a talented player. I mean, the fact that we got him for three four million is incredible. That's that's just great a great bit of business and what was what was the point I was going to make about it? I he's just what I think he would he'll really suit playing under a Rogers style of play because I don't think he's as good at the inverted fullback role as maybe Greg Taylor was that's why I'm a wee bit worried about Greg Taylor going forward because then he'll have to play as a traditional fullback when an inverted role suits him a wee bit more. For Alistair Johnson, he is a fullback. He is very much. Getting getting the ball to the byline, crossing it in, that's his game. Uh, he'll be, I think, he'll be one of the standouts under Rodgers next season. He'll be, he'll be like another captain on the pitch. I would say. Yeah, uh, Red Scotland saying he loves Ralston and Maida, but he honestly think the race will be run under Brendan Rodgers. Fair enough. And Derek Root coming in and saying Alistair Johnson would be daft to leave Celtic. I think so too. At this moment in time, I don't think he will. But again, money talks, and there's plenty of clubs with money. Andrew Galea saying he loves Ralston and uh, Pete McGee saying AJ is the one player I thought Ange might try to steal, not convinced about any of the other rumours. We think I like on that one, Pete McGee. I uh, I had in the back of my head that he would be the one and all the other stuff's kind of, you know, red herrings. The one that he wants is, is Anthony Johnston. So I would be... Uh, Sorry, Alistair Johnson. Alistair Johnson. Uh, <laughs> I think you've conjoined uh, the two of them. I, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was reading, reading something about the comp, Anthony Ralston. Uh, yeah, but Alistair Johnson is the one I, I would feel most uh, about losing at this particular juncture. Because I think he's been a, a terrific player since he came in, but very important player and gave you that balance with himself and Taylor in uh, both the, the wing back positions and just adapted. Uh, Brilliantly, so here's hoping that continues next season. Kevin Ferry, I Tony, he's laughing. He's <laughs> a <laughs> Anthony Johnson, yes. Just making, just making up players now. He's making that up as he goes along. I think, uh, yes, living proof. You can fool all the people all of the time, Ryan. Look, my, I'm doing it. You know what I mean? So there you go. Yeah, but hey, and uh, DR saying Ralph and Stone needs a statue after his late goal. That's the one at Ross County he was talking about. A very important goal in the title race under Andrew first season. So, indeed, well, young man, that's been 45 minutes almost. Fixtures are out this week, I believe, as well, aren't they? Friday, I'm sure, yeah. Friday, yes, we will discuss them and all the detail when they arrive, see what the computer generates for Celtic Ryan. I'm always interested in that, how the computer generates, uh, where they go first to fly the flag uh, uh, Kevin Ferrer you're okay Tony, good laugh Yeah, what if it's into all men, we like to <laughs> there we go Tony McGinley, Ryan Haggerty there you go, that's 
That's a, it's a hybrid of both one names, young man, but there you have it. Yeah, we shall uh, wait for the fixtures to come out on Friday. Looking forward to that. It's always, that's when you get that real buzz of adrenaline and excitement, isn't it, Ryan? When you see the fixtures for the season come out. Yeah, absolutely. It makes it real. It, it feels as if we're in this sort of part of the season where the football's so far away and then you'll get the, <laughs> you'll get the fixtures and, and you'll realise it's just around the corner. So it's always exciting. Hopefully hopefully we get a, a good home game first on Flag Day. You, you would assume that to be the case. Um, yeah. Although we did, we did start against Hearts a couple of years ago. So, but it's usually the title winners usually get the first game at home. So you're just hoping any, any game at home I'll take. Now, on the website today, just flag up before we go, there's a couple of items. Uh, there's a, an article by Alan Morrison, who in the Celtic squad is prime for Rogers pressing. That's an opinion piece, and Alan's always on the money with bees. And I'll just put this up in the comments section. Uh, there it's there, if you want to have a read at that, he's always good value, is Alan Morrison. And there's also one from myself, and uh, we've already been speaking about this, Ryan. It's what happened on day one the first time when Rogers came in and Eric Sviatchenko talks you through it. It's a brilliant insight, isn't it, Ryan? Into oh, it's absolutely brilliant. Brent, Brendan Rogers did. So you want to have a wee read at that, guys. Uh, Eric's in top form. Uh, you'll love it. It's excellent stuff. Uh, about what happened the first day Brendan Rodgers came in the first uh, and his first stint as a Celtic manager, cracking me in sight, but what he did, what he's explained to the players, how they were going to play, what they were going to do. I won't spoil it for you, but if you want to have a look at that, then please do. And also, Ryan, Twitter, if you log on to Celtic's Twitter, we're giving away, courtesy of your friends at the Celtic Way, an away jersey, and you have up until Thursday, I think all you do, Ryan, is log on to Celtic Twitter and retweet, isn't it? Retweet, retweet and offer. follow. Follow the and account follow, as well. Follow the account and retweet. And by Thursday, I could be getting in touch and asking your size, your measurements and all that for the new Celtic away jersey. The black one, it's quite a stylish wee number, isn't it, Ryan? I'm a big fan of it. Certainly is. Yeah, I got my dad it um, last week for <laughs> Father's Day. It came through on Friday. It's, it's an absolute stunner. Yeah, excellent. So there you go. So if Ryan's buying his dad for Father's Day, no bigger endorsement than that. So log on to the Celtic uh, Way Twitter account and uh, like it, retweet it. And uh, also, what else do you do, Ryan? Uh, follow the Celtic Twitter account and you can follow be a chance to, yeah, a chance to, to win the, the away jersey. And if you've enjoyed today, and you just enjoy what we do in general on the website, then why not take out a subscription? As you can see, the ticker tape running along the bottom, and we'll endeavour to provide top-notch football journalism covering the club you love, all for the click of a button, guys, www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. That's www.celticway.co.uk forward slash subscribe. Lots of cracking stuff on the site already. Just now I say that, Eric, so you can of you if you want to ever read it that. You'll enjoy that and Alan's piece as well. But yeah, we shall be back tomorrow. Have a magic Monday. Hopefully another terrific Tuesday, Ryan. Thank you to everybody who commented uh, today. I try and read as many as I'm out as I can, but they just go 10 to the dust. <laughs> it's mental, but there you go. Good show, says Derek. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Hail, hail, says Kevin Feather. Good show, lads. Thank you very much. Jason Lee, thank you again for the show, guys. Great job. Thank you. We really do appreciate it. We always say it. We can't do it without you. Your contribution is just as valid as ours, if not more important as well. That's why we try and involve you every day. Young Ryan's getting to know everybody on the comment section now. He's loving the interaction, aren't you, sir? I certainly am. Yeah, there was a couple of people that, that came came up to me last night saying that they'd watched the, the Celtic Way morning briefings when I was at that concert last night. So it's good to see that loads of people are, are, are watching and obviously recognising in person. So shout out to anyone that was uh, saying that. Uh, it's very kind. It's always very humbling when people do that, isn't it, Ryan? And most humbling thing in the world for me anyway, yeah. And they're always very kind, I have to say that. And they, uh, yeah, you know, 
it's, it's how you deal with it all, Ryan. You know, that's, that's, uh, but that's a nice wee bit of recognition of people enjoying what you do and Absolutely. appreciating what you do, but we appreciate them, so, uh, all our subscribers. And as I said before, everybody that's in the Celtic Way community, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> McKinley is all famous and stuff, says Jason Lee. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Sunder Scotland, hello, hello, boys. Same straight back to you, Sunder Scotland. Thanks very much. But guys, uh, Ryan, thank you. Enjoyed that today immensely. Roll on the fixture list on Friday. We'll somehow fill in the time, won't we, from Tuesday onwards? We always do. We always do. There's, there's <laughs> always a story. There's always a story with Celtic. <laughs> that's, the, that's one of the joys of reporting Celtic. There's always something to talk about. Yeah, Tony, totally get off. We're just heading off, Derek. Tom, oh, man, cheers. Best by far. Thank you. Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate that. And Mickey Morning. Here we are last year's. Take care. We shall see you all tomorrow. <laughs>